Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Now this tool is supposed to be able to drop down in there and be fastened in place. difficulty comes and that this clamp is supposed to wrap around there and lock up on those threads lock up on these threads but I think this tool is designed to have a little collar that attaches in there and locks this in place and holds it in position so that it's centered. But I think the only thing I could do is make something with that size thread that would thread on there and fill up the center of the motor mount. Well, I don't happen to have that. I could probably cut this down, but then I would lose that ever being able to be used on the tool again and it's it's a nice little barrel protector so I think what I'm going to do is use the handyman's favorite thing masking tape Trim off the excess. Slide at my improvised bushing over the thread. And then we set it down in here. See if that'll tighten up. There. Not 100% grip, but pretty good for a test.
Let's see what happens when I use the rotor zip tool. I think my cutter is being pulled down. The rotor zip tool actually cuts downward. It tries to pull the stock onto it. And my improvised tape bushing has got a lot of give to it. But that little rotor zip tool, I can cut odd shapes. It lets me put side load on the bearing and it will actually cut sideways in the wood. Kind of a neat feature. Pull the collet out. And then spin on this three jaw chuck. Inch drill bit. That's one sixteenth is equal to sixty-five and a half thousandths. It's a fairly small drill bit. Usually you're gonna drill that with a quarter inch drill motor and you're gonna put too much side load on it and you're gonna snap it. I've mounted a 1 16th inch drill bit in the tiny drill press here. And usually when you're running a 1 16th drill bit, you're gonna put it in a quarter inch drill motor because that's the smallest you've got. And it's gonna to put too much side load on it and you're probably gonna snap it. Having this little drill press means that I can go 1 16th of an inch or smaller because this little uh, three jaw chuck on the Dremel tool will go down to the point where you can't see a, any gap in between the three jaws. So let's see how this does. 360 is one inch times 16 equals 5,000 
5,760. We'll give it a shot on this wood, see what she does. good. Let's try it on this piece of steel. It's just a mild steel fender washer. I think my drill bit is escaping up inside the chuck. Yep. There we go. Nice through and through. I think the little drill press is going to be doing quite a good job uh, taking care of the small stuff. I think I'm going to mount it to a wooden base so I can clamp it a little easier. And I have an extra Dremel tool that I'll just leave mounted in it because that way I won't have to be adjusting it back and forth. I still need to come up with a better bushing. I probably have to make one up out of something. Maybe uh, turn down a piece of plastic that'll fit around the, the barrel of the Dremel and clamp up in this little uh, banjo fitting there. See if I can't get that to work. But I know now that it's definitely going to be strong enough to drill through a piece of steel. It'll drill through nearly anything that I'm going to want to drill a hole through. Uh, you have to be mindful of the speed. The recommended speed for drilling a one inch hole in a piece of steel mild steel is 360 RPMs. That's just a number that's been stuck in my head for 40 years since I took my original classes. And you can just multiply that out. This is a 16th drill bit, so uh, 1 16th means you multiply 360 by 16, and that comes out to about 5,750, I believe it was. Uh, and then set your speed for that and your drill will clear the chips out of the way and be able to take the strain of it. It works better running at higher speeds than lower up to the point you don't want to burn it. So if you go with a 360 multiplier, that usually will get you right within the ballpark as evidenced by this. So I'm very happy with the outcome, a little bit of cleanup, and now I have a tool that I've not had access to in a long time. A sensitive drill. Something that I can drill tiny holes with and not break the drill bit. It also allows me to use a rotozip tool to engrave things. It's not exactly the best, but it works. And this little sanding wheel, sanding drum, does a nice job. It, it actually hogged away that 
I mean, this is a small piece. Hogging is kind of a, a big word for such a little part, but it'll let me go in there and clean it up. So I'm sure I can put a small grindstone in there if I want to uh, clean up a small diameter hole. I can do that rather than using a file. That'll be a handy thing to have. So that's all for today. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.